Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ranjit Kaur. I'm the president of Breast Cancer Welfare Association Malaysia. I'm also a breast cancer survivor, like many people in this audience. Um, today we have a session which is uh, part of the Unpause um, project that we are doing with the support of uh, Pfizer Malaysia. Um, so during this session, we have uh, a one hour uh, program and we have uh, Unpause is actually a program that where we say that if anybody has metastatic breast cancer, they should not pause their life, but they should unpause, they should continue to live. So how do you continue to live is that you learn how to manage yourself, you learn to embrace life and thrive and live life with metastatic breast cancer and anyone else with breast cancer. It works the same for us as well. The first speaker is Associate Professor Dr. Tan Seng Beng, who uh, is a lecturer in uh, University of Malaya and, and he's also a palliative care physician from University of Malaya Medical Center. Now he is going to speak on breast cancer survivorship and learning to let go. So his topic is breast cancer survivorship, letting go. I've always learned something new from Associate Professor Tan Seng Beng. Every time he speaks, I learn something new. So can we all welcome Associate Professor Dr. Tan Seng Beng to give his talk? Welcome, Professor. Okay, thank you, Ranjit. Um, today I'm going to talk about letting go. So I will start by sharing a story of one of my patients. So the story started like this. So there was a woman with lung cancer. She failed multiple lines of chemotherapy. And you can see on the right side is her daughter, who is a medical student. And on the left side is the husband. So they are fairly devastated by the uh, news of uh, the, the advanced stage of the lung cancer. Then she came to see me in my clinic and uh, she asked me many questions during the clinic. And I answered all her questions one by one. There are a lot of questions. Then she came to my clinic many times and every time she came to my clinic, she will has a lot of questions uh, and uh, she is very like anxious to know uh, all the answers. And I answer all her questions. So at the end of our meetings, I noticed that she was slowly better able to let go. So let's uh, stop the story for a while and uh, we will continue this story later. So what is letting go? Letting go is to stop holding. You can see the picture is uh, to stop holding. You can see the fingers, they are not holding, the hands not holding together. And to stop holding on to what? Is it our identity, our fame, or our possessions, our wealth, or our relationships, our family? So I don't mind if you want to let go of your like possession to me. And no, things to let go of are our harmful thoughts, feelings, and unhealthy habits. This is very important. We need to throw away all those thoughts and feelings that are harmful to us because they make us suffer. But how they make us suffer is when we feel something, we will develop liking or disliking and then our mind will want or not want something and then we will hold on to it and not letting go that's why we suffer when a feeling arises is the reaction the negative reactions of ourselves that cause us to suffer it's like when then when a feeling arises, it is the first arrow shoot by other people, and the second arrow is our reaction that we shoot ourselves. So we are responsible for our own suffering also. 
and some people they shoot themselves many times. So the main cause of our suffering is our automatic negative reactions. That's why two persons facing a similar event, one may suffer and one may not. But how to let go? There are many ways to let go, just like there are many ways to roam. But I'll just talk about mindfulness as one way to let go. And uh, also make use of this opportunity to advertise this new book, Mindfulness. It is available at Amazon. So what is mindfulness? Mindfulness is looking inside. It is looking inside our mind. And when we look inside our mind, we are paying attention to something, an object. And we, it's a practice of letting go of all the other distractions. So when we practice mindfulness, we are training the muscles of attention and training the muscles of letting go just like we are going to a gym. So you can see the dog is very mindful. He is able to pay attention to the things that is happening, but uh, the man is not very mindful. The mind is uh, full of thoughts, full of distractions, not able to let go. So for mindfulness, there are four ways or four foundation to establish mindfulness. And these four ways are mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of mind, and mindfulness of thoughts. So now, I think when you're looking at the screen, I invite you to have a short practice with your eyes open. I will guide you through the practice when you look at the screen. So we start at mindfulness of the breath. A few moments to recognize your breath when you breathe in and your breath when you breathe out. So pay attention on your in-breath and your out-breath. And pay attention to your posture as well right now, whether you are sitting, standing, lying down, or doing some yoga when you are looking at the screen. So pay attention on the posture that you're having, the contact point between you and the chair. And the activities that you're doing right now, you are looking at the screen. So just uh, be aware that you are looking at the screen and not thinking about the next speaker who is more handsome than me or thinking about the past. So just focus on the present moment what is the activity you are doing? Then be aware that our body is made of uh, various uh, body parts. To summarize it, it's the skin, the flesh, and the bone. Our body is covered by skin. And inside our skin, there are flesh and organs. And inside the flesh, they are bones. These are our body parts. And the body parts is made from various elements, the earth elements, the solidity, especially the bones, the water element, the liquidity, especially the blood and the body fluid, and the fire element, the heat and temperature of our body and the wind element or the air element of a motion, particularly evident in our breath. So we are made of all these elements that are exactly the same as nature, nothing special. And our ultimate fate of our body is to fall apart. So be mindful that death is inevitable in our life. So every breath that we take, we are getting closer to death. So in practicing mindfulness of the body, be aware that death can come at any time. Then we move on to mindfulness of feelings. While you are sitting and looking at the screen, scan your body 
very quickly for any pleasant feeling like on the right side of the diagram or any unpleasant feeling like the left side or any neutral feelings and see whether you can recognize there is a push of the feelings. We are always chasing pleasure. The pleasant feeling push us to chase towards it. And the painful feeling chase us away and we want to run away from pain. So try to recognize this push because this push is a direct experience of our conditionality, where when a feeling arises, it will push us to react. But if we have mindfulness, we can choose not to react. So this is a crucial link to end our suffering uh, if we, when we practice mindfulness. So next, we move on to mindfulness of mind. So be aware of our mind right now. Are we paying attention to the slides or are we wandering? Is our mind wandering somewhere else? Or we are mindful of the presentation? So if our mind is wandering right now, is it wandering to something pleasant, the mind of greed? Or is it wandering to something towards some uh, away from something unpleasant, the mind of anger, or is it just daydreaming without paying attention, the delusion, the mind of delusion? And the last part, mindfulness of thoughts. Take a few moments to be aware of the thoughts that arise in our mind. Are there any thoughts that are uh, blocking our practice of mindfulness? Are there any greedy thoughts that color our mind like the dye? Or any angry thoughts that are spoiling inside our mind? Or any lazy thoughts that are like the green alga in the stagnant water? Or any worrying thoughts like the water ripper by the wind? Or any deluded thoughts like in the dark? The, a glass of water in the dark. So these are the five hindrances. We check our mind to see whether any of these hindrances are present. And for a short moment, we may notice that our mind, when we are completely in the present moment, free from all the hindrances mentioned just now, and our mind is like, crystal clear, completely in the present moment. And then we try to see how to remove all these automatic negative thoughts. How come our mind can be temporarily clear of all the thoughts, the negative thoughts? We notice that, yes, beginning we are mindful. We practice mindfulness. We follow the instructions just now. And we investigate our mind for any hindrances, all those negative thoughts. And we make effort to remove or throw away all our negative thoughts. And give away our positive thoughts, because positive thoughts can be a burden as well sometimes. And there's this joy when our mind is free from hindrances or free from negativity. We feel like very joyful. It's the joy of being in the present moment. And this joy leads to tranquility. It, when the joy dies down, we will feel very calm. And the tranquility leads to concentration. Our mind becomes very collected. And with this concentration, we are able to see things clearly. Then we become better able to let go 
and be free from the push of feelings. And all these are the seven liberating factors. So mindfulness, investigation, and then make effort. If it doesn't spark joy, then you throw away your negative things. And joy, and then tranquility, concentration, and leads to eventually letting go. So if your mindfulness practice doesn't lead to letting go, then you may be practicing uh, incorrectly. So mindfulness leads to letting go and it's a DIY thing because you have to do it yourself. If you need some help, then the other way of letting go is letting go. That means you surrender everything and allows everything to happen naturally and leave everything to God. So you can see this picture, God creates Adam. Uh, Adam also need to let go. If, if Adam is holding God's hand, then the man cannot be created. So back to our story. After uh, my patient is better able to let go, then uh, she is uh, happier, able to smile. Then you can see the daughter who is a medical student uh, also uh, happier, you can see that she is smiling even though with a mask. And can even uh, uh, buy a, a bouquet of flowers for the patient. And I think you can see the, these are the doctors uh, who is taking care of uh, the patient. And then the husband is on the right side. So at the end, the patient uh, passed on and the daughter uh, wrote me a message. It has been almost a couple of months since my mom has passed and I still think about her a lot. I'm still deeply saddened by her passing. But every time I think about it, my heart is always filled with so much gratitude. I really couldn't have asked for more. The conversation you had with her about the three pillars of truth was beautiful. It has given me so much comfort throughout these past few months. My mother has lived a wonderful life and she has experienced a beautiful end. I wouldn't change a thing. I never thought this was possible. For all that you have done, I'll be eternally grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So you can see, uh, if you practice mindfulness, you will be able to see things clearly and uh, you may be able to see the three pillars of truth and it will allow you to be able, better able to let go. So the third way of letting go is thank you. So you, you should uh, practice saying thank you all the time uh, and be grateful or three times a day at least, then it eventually you will be able to let go more things. Uh. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tan Sing Bing. I think that was a very, very enriching uh, talk that we've got from you. So uh, I think we need more practical sessions uh, from Professor Tan Sing Bing so that we can learn more from you on how to live life and how to manage ourselves. I would like to start with a question uh, for Associate Professor Dr. Tan Sing Bing. Now, you, you talked about letting go. What uh, we see is that many human beings, many people, um, they, they are born in a family and they grow up having relationships like they are children and then they have, they have brothers and sisters and they have, they have parents and then they grow up and then they, they meet somebody and they get married and, and they have a lot of relationships. And when people have relationships, it fi they find it difficult to let go. And sometimes that clutter comes into the head as well. How do you teach people? I mean, you have a family too. How do you learn to let go? Oh, uh, I think to answer the question, uh, it's very important for us to know that what, what are the things that we should let go and what are the things that we shouldn't let go. Um, for the relationship, I think we shouldn't let go of relationship that nurture our uh, well-being 
we, we should let go of the part of the relationship that, uh, that are harming ourselves. Like those harmful relationship, we, we need to let go. Like I, have, I have a patient before, last time, uh, the wife, the wife t- asked me, uh, I, she said she cannot let go of a patient because the patient is dying. Then she asked me how, how to let go. Then I told her, you shouldn't let go because your husband is still able to talk, you know, is still alive. And then uh, you, you, it's, uh, it's not the time to let go also, I think. And they are having a very uh, love, loving uh, relationship. There's nothing to let go, you know. So for me, I, I told her, no, now you should cling on to uh, him uh, tightly. It's not, not to let go. So in a way, uh, she feel much better. She She's like, uh, I mean, a lot of people ask her to let go, let go, let go. It's not to let go of the loving relationship. It's to let go of all, all the negative feelings and the negative thoughts that are bothering us up. The next question is, it is not easy to let our mind clear during meditation. Is there any method to effectively calm our mind during meditation? Now, this is a a patient speaking who actually has issues about, sometimes many patients have issues about calming themselves, particularly when there is this whole roller coaster, overwhelming experience that they're getting as a result of being diagnosed with this dreadful disease that they find difficult to uh, cope with. So over to you, uh, Dr. Tan. Oh, thank you. Effective way to clear, calm our mind during meditation. So ideally, it depends on how stressed we are. Uh, let's say every day, how many, uh, how many hours we are stressed. If the more hours by right, we have to practice the same amount of hours of uh, mindfulness exercises. But because the willpower of many people are not as strong uh, uh, to be able to practice so long. So what I suggest is every day spend maybe five minutes uh, to practice. And, and because five minutes will take a very minimal willpower for you. So in, in the long run, uh, every day you improve a little bit, come a little bit, come a little bit. Don't aim too high. As long as you come for five minutes and then uh, after it becomes a natural habit, then the effect will shoot up very fast. So in the beginning, you have to continue to practice it uh, in a very uh, 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 small way first. Then slowly it will gain the momentum. Thank you, uh, Prof Tan. It sounds like small steps and uh, in, with the small steps, you gradually achieve a little bit per day and you just go on and you you will and 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 mind you there are times when it will really pull you down so badly that you have to start the steps all over again yeah yeah that you, you don't be discouraged by the beginning because in the beginning you don't see any result because of your practice the 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 curve is like like this like this like this like this like this so you thought the curve is like that but after, when you, when you get the practice already, then you start to go like this. So uh, I think don't be discouraged by uh, the results. Don't expect too much from the result, but learn how to enjoy the small little exercises that you are doing. The calm of the five minutes, or even one minute if you are very busy like Ranjit. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Master Tan Singh Bing. Um, I, I, uh, the thing is, uh, we know that a lot of uh, uh, in our life when we get a bad news, something like going through a traumatic experience, we, we experience post-traumatic stress disorder. And many a time you find that people tend to focus more on what I should eat. Patients tend to focus on what I should or shouldn't eat. Family focuses on that. But there's very little focus on how to handle my mind, how to handle my my, my thoughts uh, and my emotions. Uh, and people tend to suffer in silence. How do you 
incorporate that. I mean, besides us as peer support programs, we, we, we have volunteers who give support to patients. But besides that, on the professional side, uh, as we have the medical intervention, we have the TCM intervention, whether there is a psychosocial or psychological intervention that could be given in the very beginning. You have patients suffering from sleepless nights. They, they get insomnia. They, get, uh, they have difficulty focusing on their normal routine. Uh, they have difficulties in handling their, their relationships at that time with their children or with their loved ones. So how do you uh, look forward to having some kind of an, uh, an intervention also for patients who are newly diagnosed and who are going through the first, first few uh, phases of their diagnosed uh, experience? Okay, thank you, Ranjit. Um, I think for psychosocial suffering, uh, we need to know very clearly uh, what patient is experiencing. Because uh, when we interview patients, uh, when they talk about their suffering, you can see that every patient has different uh, suffering experience. In whether there's uh, some more emotional or some uh, more uh, excessive thinking, and then some is more of uh, a spiritual uh, suffering. So we need to assess uh, individually to find the, their unique experience of their suffering. And based on that, we need to tailor our uh, psychological treatment based on their uh, unique types of suffering. So for example, uh, certain patients, they are very uh, emotional. So maybe for this type of patient, in the beginning, we need them to allow them to express their emotion first, express and, and ventilate their emotion. Until, uh, it is uh, they are calmer and then slowly guide them to learn how, how to be aware of their own emotion when it arrives and when it comes and when it goes. So we uh, guide them to be more aware of their emotion and more aware of their reaction towards their emotions, towards their feelings. So it very much depends on the individual experience. It is very important to, to uh, map out their experience of suffering and, and analyze it properly before we can uh, tailor uh, the particular psychosocial approach to, to their suffering. And another example is that, for example, there are patients who are suffering because they find it uh, meaningless to continue living or pointless to continue living. So in that case, we need to focus on meaning. How do we help the patient to find meaning in their suffering despite their uh, experience their yeah, tragic or uh, adverse experience. So uh, it's, I must say it's a individual uh, approach. Uh. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof Tan. Um, I think uh, this is an area that is much uh, needs a lot more attention than, than what we think it should be because the body situation is very obviously can be seen on the outside and as you said we need to assess the situation we need to tailor make the the the, the support for them that they need master tan's area is really very uniquely um, encompasses the part about thinking the part about life the part about meaning of life spirituality uh, the emotional situation relationships it's so wide and so much and you are alone we need many more people like you. <laughs> I'm not alone. Uh, uh, Ranji, you are with me, right? <laughs> yes, of course I'm with you. <laughs> Master Tan, uh, some concluding remarks from you, please. Okay, my summary of letting go. Letting go doesn't mean uh, you need to let go of everything. And then even enjoyment, you need to let go. And then just live a very uh, like um, boring life. You can still enjoy life. Uh, uh, and the, the, it's like, like this uh, pen uh, that I'm holding, right? So it's, I'm holding on tightly. That, that, that is, uh, that if it causes you to suffer, then you have to think of another way. Another way you can have the pen is you, you just uh, 
uh, hold like this. You let go already, but you still got the pen with you. Uh, uh, still with the gone pen with you, you still can enjoy all, everything that you want. Uh, it's just that when you uh, when you lose it, you, you're not like grasping at it. Uh. So when the time to let go, then you get better able to let go. So maybe this is my summary. Uh. Put on your speaker, put on your speaker as well. And let's give a clap. Thank you. 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 Thank